Let's try and uh, cross back to Desiree now. Uh, traditionally, multinationals are companies from the U.S. and Europe that have developed a footprint that spans the whole world and mostly into Africa. Now, the Afro Champions Initiative wants to turn this trend around and highlight African countries that, uh, or companies, I should say, that are growing first on the continent and then into the world. Let's go to Hyde Park once again and hopefully we've got everything sorted out there. Uh, Desiree Chauke, let's get back to your interview with your guests. Thank you so much, Leon. Abel, let's pick up where we left off, talking about Ethiopian Airlines and the impact it's making on the continent. How are you doing in terms of collaboration with other airlines um, in the other African countries? We do have a very good collaboration with other airlines in our continent. In fact, we partner with other airlines in terms of a very strong strategic partnership. We have a strong partnership with an airline based in Togo, Askai. We have a very good relationship with another airline, Malawian in Southern African country. So this relationship shows that us Africans need to have our expertise combined together so that we can maintain a very good aviation industry which is compatible uh, with, with, other in with other airlines across the world. So we do have a very good relationship with most of the airlines and there are more strategic partnerships currently being discussed yeah. with airlines in Lusaka, even to, to start up a new airline, helping other African countries to have their own startups, not only having a relationship with established ones. But how are all these efforts, uh, Mr. Takobong, mm. contributing to creating the African globalizers? I think the key thing is about really creating entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs. So if you take, for instance, the contract that GE has with Transnet, a key thing of that is 51% local content in terms of what goes into locomotive. The next phase is actually developing suppliers who can provide and supply equipment to GE globally. So it's really starting with a small contract with the view of saying we'll create entrepreneurs who will be able to produce equipment not just for the South African command yeah. but also for what we need globally. So it's that type of approach of saying get young developers, get young businesses, expose them to the footprint that GE has. So one of the things that the report was doing is uh, sourcing out all these globalizers and they were saying that 70 percent of them came from south africa and yet the narrative here is jobless joblessness and a slow uh, or non-growing uh, economy it, it almost sounds contradictory it, it does but i think that the, the opportunity then it presents to the challenge of slow growing economy is a continental one and i think for me the more we start driving businesses within the continent I think my colleague from Ethiopian Airlines was saying the number of destinations they have in Africa yeah. already starts to push a narrative to say, you know, yes, we want to go outside, but how much are we doing in the continent? Because that's where it starts. So, in terms of your business, how many African lines do you have, routes do you have, and, and how much are you going to the global market? Currently, we have 102 destinations uh, in the world in six wow. continents. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Africa, we have 56 destinations and increasing. So the fact that Africa is our home market, we always aspire to connect each African city with a very short connection and then similar service. Everybody views you as a success story, but how is this impacting on employment in your country? It is a success story. It's a truly a success story. You can say Ethiopian is one of the leading multinationals out of the country itself. So it has employed a lot of Ethiopians. Uh, almost 98% of the employment in the country is covered by uh, locals, which means to purely Ethiopians. So this has uh, contributed largely to the economy and to the employment in the industry and job creation as well. So what's the role of GE here today? I think for us today is we talk about the agenda looking forward and what companies like GE can help and drive and bring on expertise to take African companies into the world. So our role is to say we want to be the ones who support the development of building more and more African global companies. And for Ethiopian Airlines, uh, what does uh, being part of this event mean for you? Uh, being part of this event is to take experience and to show how our industries in the continent are doing in general and particularly in the aviation industry and to take some skills how we can collaborate together to create uh, the African giants. Yeah. We, in South Africa, the, the, the conversation right now is how to revive the national carrier. Are you having conversations with them? Uh, what kind of conversations? We are not having a specific conversations, but we have a very good uh, collaboration with uh, South African Airways through our Star Alliance partnership. Uh, we hope South African Airlines would come back and uh, do uh, very good things in the continent. In the, in the overall picture, I know you started a hub recently. <laughs> what kind of new innovations are we seeing coming out from initiatives like that 
to say this is where Africa is going? Well, I think if you look at the whole space of digital, you can't ignore it. <clears throat> and I think that is going to be a game changer for where the continent is going. And the beauty about coming in, I guess, from the back is that you leapfrog technology. You know, you, you look at, for instance, if you take the telecom industry, done, yeah. the success of something like M-Pesa, which is a quite an innovative banking yeah. service that was a big one. aimed for the market. Yeah. And we're saying more and more M-Pesas should come out. You know, companies like Andela in Nigeria, where you've got a hub of young engineers who write code out of Nigeria. So I think we've got the beauty on the continent of having a young population and a very hungry population. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to make sure that we give these, these youngsters the opportunity to thrive? So since the conversation here today is about creating globalizers, but who start on the continent, and our <coughs> South African viewers watching right now thinking, what kind of opportunities can we look at in Ethiopia? What, what would you say to that kind of question? Uh, Ethiopia is a developing nation. Uh, its population is around one mi 100 million currently. So there is a huge opportunity for uh, different businesses in South Africa to invest in Ethiopia, yeah. including in manufacturing and agro processing and in the service sector. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making the time to go uh, to come and talk to us. We hope um, the initiative being started here today just grows in leaps and bounds because it's, it's quite an exciting one, Absolutely. I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, Sarami Daukobong is with uh, GE and Abel Alemo is with uh, the Ethiopian. Ethiopian Airlines. Everybody's talking about it as a success story these days in Africa. And we were coming to you from Hyde Park here uh, covering the launch of the African Globalizers Report. It's back to Joe for now.